Hello everyone. If you are new to data profiling, I recommend watching the previous videos to get a solid understanding of the basics on what is data profiling and why it's important. In this video, we'll dive into how to profile your data using Snowflake. If you don't have a Snowflake account yet, here is how to create one. Go to Snowflake's website, sign up with your email address and password, Choose a cloud provider, either AWS, Azure, or GCP, and a region close to your location. Verify your email to complete the setup. Now let's get started with profiling. We'll use the sample example, plant equipment that we discussed in our previous video, data profiling versus data quality assessment. This dataset contains information about various plant equipment, including its location and maintenance history. First, we'll create a table called plant equipment before moving on to the profiling steps. Let's open the snowflake now. Here you go. This is the home page of snowflake. Click on create SQL worksheet. Let me create a database and then add a table under that. Create database retail DB. I want to demonstrate all retail scenarios under this DB, hence the name retail DB. Now let's create a table under that. Execute it. All right, let's refresh this. You're seeing a retail DB under which the table is plant equipment. Time to insert data into this table. Adding some generic data into this so we can profile the stats. The table name is plant equipment. Execute it. Six rows inserted. Now let's fetch the data using select. Here you go. Look at the columns in the table. Equipment ID, which is nothing but your unique identifier of the equipment. Name column is nothing but the name of the equipment. Location where your equipment resides and equipment status, whether it is active, retired, etc., and partner managed. Is this equipment managed by partner, yes or no, is indicated by the Boolean values, true or false. Next one, retired date. Date on which the equipment is retired. Now that we know what each column represents, we can begin profiling to understand its characteristics. Since we are profiling the data manually using SQL, Let's take it step by step. First, apply profiling measures by data type, meaning each column type has unique measures we can apply. For example, for integer columns like ID, we can apply measures like count, min, max, and average to get insights into total entries, ranges, and averages. Likewise, for worker columns like equipment name, Measures such as length, count, and distinct help us see data variety. Next, apply measures based on business requirements because using business context allows us to better interpret results. For example, retirement date shows up only when the status is retired. All right, let's start with a sample profiling query to get an initial snapshot of the equipment ID column. Let's run the profiling query. So this specific query gives insights on equipment ID column. So now we have our profiling stats of ID column. What's next? We use these statistics to define baseline values to create data quality rules. For example, the row count matches the count of distinct equipment ID values, right? This indicates no duplicates are expected in the ID column. 
Similarly, rain check. Using min and max, we see the expected range of IDs. This range can form a baseline for future data quality checks. In this video, we'll focus just on profiling. In the next session, we'll cover how to turn these baselines into data quality rules. This way, it won't overload you with too much at once. Now let's move to the other column, location. All right, let's execute the profiling query for location. If you see this query, I'm using typical SQL clauses to derive the basic stats. For example, count, distinct location count, empty locations, null locations, and minimum, maximum, average length of the location, etc. All are basic stats. These are not the only stats that can be derived or that have to be derived. That is up to you. Based on your requirement, we draw a line everywhere, right? How much is too much? So I believe these are the good number of stats that one should start with. Execute it. See, now you have got total row six, unique location count two. Unlike ID column, there is a difference in the total rows and unique location count. That means there are some null locations as well. Minimum location count is 11, maximum is also 11, hence the average length is 11. What else? Overall, we derived some of the characteristics of the location column from the table plant equipment. Like we discussed before for the ID column, baseline values can be created out of these derived profiling stats to create the data quality rules. We have already covered one numeric column, one varchar column. Let's also profile the boolean column as well as date column. So far we have covered equipment ID and location columns. That means we covered number data type as well as varchar data type. Let's derive the profiling stats for boolean and date data type as well. So the next column is partner managed, which is of boolean data type. We can cover the profiling stats almost similar to the other data types like number or varchar. There is no big difference. See, in this query, again, we wanted to see how many total rows, not null count, null count, true count, as well as false count. You can have a question. Why are we counting this total rows in every column as we derive profiling stats? You don't have to, but it's just our convenience to have the total count just next to the profiling stats of that specific column. If we write a single query to derive all the column profiling stats, then you'll see only one row count. All right, let's execute this. See the data that you have got, total row six, not null count six. So there is no question of null. So nulls are not expected in this column is what it is clear from the existing data. It can be either true or false. That way, the profiling query shows the distribution of partner managed column that helps set data quality rules like avoiding nulls or tracking true false balance. So these are the profiling stats for a Boolean data type. Next one, date data type for retired date column. So again, almost the similar profiling query the additional stats that we have added are for minimum date and max date, in addition to the count of rows, not null count and null counts. Let's execute this. Here you go. So what are the profiling insights from the query? The query provides a snapshot of how the retired column is populated. A high number of null values might indicate that many pieces of equipment are still active. The earliest date that we have got through minimum of retired date column and latest date from max of retired date column can help set the baselines for acceptable values when creating the data quality rules. That's it for today's session on data profiling using Snowflake. We explored how to analyze data column by column and derive valuable insights for setting baselines. In our next video, we'll take it a step further 
and learn how to create data quality rules based on these profiling results. Thanks for watching and see you in the next one.